Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah Rabbil Alemin. Ve salatu ve selam ala khatma nebiya ve mursalin. Sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Praises be to Allah. And we send salutations on Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. I am Imam Abu Ishaq Abdul Hafiz, the director of the prison outreach program. I'd like to thank Shura TV for allowing us to have this conversation with you today, the, our community. Uh, and I know sometimes people have had that question on why uh, the prison outreach program, uh, why have a prison outreach program? Uh, these people deserve nothing. Uh, they have been found guilty. Uh, they wronged someone or they hurt someone. I mean, these are questions that sometimes people have about why we have evolved and developed uh, this program. And i like to address uh, some of that. Initially, I like to say that uh, in the United States, freedom of religion is a constitutionally protected right uh, provided in the religious clause of the First Amendment. Uh, this is also uh, associated with the uh, separation of church and state. Uh, there is an entity, the Muslim Advocate, that uh, last year in 2019, uh, they did a, a study and found that 12% of uh, women and men incarcerated in federal prisons uh, self-identified as Muslim. Uh, when they uh, contacted other states, uh, 34 different states they contacted, uh, there was a, a wide range of, of, of differences. Some had 20 percent uh, of those incarcerated identifying themselves as Muslims and some as low as 1 percent uh, their total population uh, being described as Muslim. Um, one of the things that, that I, before I get into uh, some of the particulars, I uh, just want to share uh, something that occurred uh, in 2019 in the state of Alabama. Uh, there was a man, Dominique Ray. He requested that his clergy be in the room with him as he was going to be executed. And the request was denied by the Alabama Department of Corrections. He filed uh, a suit and the uh, appellate court in Alabama agreed that being Christian uh, clergy were able to be in the room with a Christian person upon request uh, in execution, it was allowed. And so they felt that this should not be limited to any one faith group, but to all. But the Supreme Court, uh, by a ruling of five to four, ruled against this and the Imam, because uh, Dominique had become Muslim, uh, was denied to be in the room with him and he had to witness the execution from the witness's room. This is one of the, 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 the things that uh, should galvanize and, and motivate all of us uh, to want to be advocates for those who have decided and chosen uh, to be Muslim uh, while incarcerated uh, or to uh, activate uh, in, in, in a participatory way their faith uh, after being incarcerated. For those who uh, use the excuse because someone is convicted uh, that they should not be allowed uh, the ex opportunity to express their religious uh, tradition uh, to, or to practice or to have access to their clergy, uh, they aren't evidently uh, aware that there are many persons who have been convicted wrongly in our system. And so to just take a blanket statement that because someone has been convicted or because someone has harmed someone or someone has done wrong, we have a faith that uh, is part and parcel uh, in believing in forgiveness. Forgiveness by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forgiveness uh, of the person forgiving themselves. Uh, the opportunity for even the victim to forgive the person who per per perpetrated something against them. So we live in a society and in a world where, where this is part and parcel of our faith is for forgiveness. And when a person has uh, sought and seeks the opportunity to learn how to worship correctly, then we have a responsibility as a community to uh, address that. And in 2012, uh, under the directorship at the Shura Council of Brother Shaquille Saeed, 
uh, and I had retired as a, a chaplain in the federal system for over 22 years. He asked if I would take on the, uh, the role of being a director and setting up a program uh, for our community uh, to provide a service uh, to those that are incarcerated. And this uh, has twofold uh, components. One was to be available to the men and women in the jails and prisons throughout Southern California who were writing letters oftentimes to massages and Islamic centers and not being responded to uh, oftentimes because those centers uh, didn't uh, know what to do with those letters and requests and so they just left, were left dormant. Uh, so this was to address that particular issue as well as to inform and to educate our communities about the worthiness of persons who had been uh, incarcerated seeking assistance and help in ways in which we could assist and help them. Also that we could become partners with the uh, administrations in the county jails and the city jails and the state and federal prisons so that inshallah uh, a relationship would be established that we could make sure that they uh, had someone that could help to direct them on those things that are uh, significant and important when it comes to religious matters that affect Muslims. Uh, one of the uh, number one claims that occur in the courts throughout this country for Muslim uh, men and women incarcerated is about their diet uh, as well as about the, their access to having group worship opportunities. And so by the community uh, and the community's leadership being in a relationship with the administrators, the wardens, and, and those that uh, manage and run these prisons, we could be able to articulate uh, the necessity and, and, and the, the requirements of, uh, of, of these that are being legitimate. And so we become a legitimate voice from the outside that can be uh, there for those men and women uh, on the inside. Uh, Muslims have been in the prison system uh, across this country for more than a century. There's documented facts that show uh, Muslims even in the 1890s uh, there being persons identified as Muslim man or, or the terminology of the Muslim, uh, but we know that it was identifying Muslims going back again the early part of the last century. Uh, then we know often mostly almost every Muslim has heard the name Malcolm X, but you have to remember Malcolm X is only one among millions who have embraced Islam and whose lives have been totally changed uh, by the uh, guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides uh, with his book. And we as a community uh, after 9-11 uh, incorrectly often uh, were being uh, targeted uh, as being a, a community that should be feared in this whole concept of the radicalization of Islam in prisons uh, again was something we wanted to address not from a reactionary uh, disposition but from uh, a proactive role that we wanted to play to uh, make sure that materials that were being provided to the men and women in the jails and the prisons uh, was that which was appropriate and that which is meets the community standards uh, of what is correct uh, rather than them being uh, left to whatever anyone sends inside uh, that would not be necessarily uh, vetted and could be material that is not at all representative uh, of the community value system. And so those are some of the things that go into the, the why. Uh, and when did this program uh, become something that was uh, a, a movable and uh, actionable, again, began in, in 2012. And I do want to take this time to, to thank the community for uh, responding. Uh, we were able in, in this period of time from 2012 into 2020 to distribute over 10,000 Qur'ans in jails and prisons throughout Southern California. We've been able to uh, send thousands of uh, booklets produced uh, by Sheikh Mustafa Umar, uh, Why Islam and How to Pray. Uh, books uh, a welcome to Islam and, and how to pray as well as he did a, a seer a, a seerah, a small uh, seerah on Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that was a, is another tool that we've been able to introduce into the jails and the prisons uh, that has made a positive uh, impact upon uh, men and women who have uh, newly entered into the folds of Islam. We have been able to uh, with the community's support and help uh, establish libraries 
Uh, many of the state prisons, they don't have budgets for uh, religious uh, materials. And so we've been able to support the Muslim chaplains. There are more than 16 Muslim chaplains in the state uh, of California's uh, Department of Correction. And we've been able to supply them with sets of Bukhari and Muslim and uh, the Sahih Sitta and Alhamdulillah, other uh, books and materials to again enhance the ability uh, of those doing long periods of time to study Islam uh, at length uh, and, and to, uh, to be able to grow. You know, alhamdulillah. Uh, during the month of Ramadan, we've been able to uh, supply several of the, of, the, of the prisons throughout Southern California in particular, but we've also extended our assistance and helped to even uh, the prisons in Northern California, whether it's San Quentin or uh, San Luis Obispo, the men's colony, which is in Central California. Uh, we've been able to supply each year uh, dates for thousands of the Muslim inmates. Uh, we've been able to supply hijabs to the Muslim women uh, serving time in Chowchilla Women's Prison up in uh, Northern California as well as the women's prison here in Southern California. These are prisons that hold the largest number of, of women uh, in the country as well as the prison system in California is the largest uh, throughout the United States as well, and one of the largest in the world. And we've been able to, again, supply them with materials uh, during the blessed month of Ramadan. We've been able to uh, facilitate their, their Eid prayers, um, their Eid prayers and, and services, uh, as well as their meals uh, through the contributions that we have received and been able to disseminate uh, to support uh, Islam. And in spite of this, you know, uh, the Muslim inmates are one of the least uh, attended to out of all of the different faith groups in the prison system. And this is something that we're consistently and constantly working uh, on through our uh, ability to have uh, seminars at different Islamic centers and masajids to uh, get per people in, interested in becoming volunteers. Uh, volunteer services is not something that the outreach program in and of itself uh, develops or maintains, but there are uh, some community uh, that have established uh, volunteer programs. One is the Corona Islamic Center uh, in Corona. They have uh, a volunteer program that goes into uh, Chino Men's Prison. Uh, the uh, Islamic Institute of Orange County has developed a link outside and will have uh, shortly uh, more of a partnership with them and have uh, Brother Amin uh, Shakir who directs that program to come before the community and share what they do. Uh, in their uh, outreach program and, and taking groups of men uh, to the different prisons uh, and having different weekend seminars and programs as well as uh, uh, courses that they have been able to uh, provide, uh, correspondence courses that were developed by Sheikh Mustafa Omar. May Allah SWT bless them and bless uh, the work that they do which is, which is essential and which has expanded uh, our community outreach uh, working with those inside of the jails and the prisons. And when I speak to about, you know, those who are incarcerated and, and, and those who are locked up, this is not to not highlight our uh, commitment to those who have been victimized and, and to those who, who suffer. Uh, we looking forward to expanding uh, what we do uh, to include restorative justice uh, where we can bring together those who have harmed and those who have been harmed so that there can be reconciliation and that we can help to uh, transition persons back into the community uh, and to become whole again. Uh, we want to have services and programs that again that deal with uh, the trauma that those who have been victimized have gone through. Uh, and so these are some of the things you know, in the future that we are evolving uh, this program uh, to expand uh, what it is that we do uh, in this realm and in this field. And this is something that not just serves our particular community, but it serves the community. Uh, you know, we, we live in a society where with millions of persons who have been incarcerated and their families have been impacted, the community has been impacted. And we as Muslims, in, you know, want to be partners in, inshallah, healing and bringing, uh, you know, healthy uh, and, and safety, uh, you know, to our community. We want to be able to expand the mental health uh, component for those that have been uh, incarcerated for long periods of times in their lives, as well as for their families, uh, their children, uh, their, their, their parents. You know, a lot of times they've been alone uh, 
and alone dealing with a lot of mental stresses that come from having a loved one incarcerated for generations or for decades or will never you know come out of the uh, that environment uh, so we want to be able again as we expand what we do and how we do it uh, to reach those elements of the community but we cannot do any of this without the community's support and without you know your your backing but we want you to know that uh, the funds that you do provide to this uh, program it goes you know 90 percent towards the programs that we say uh, that we are uh, evolving or developing or working with and we are constantly open uh, to have others to join us uh, and and to be able to be a part you know, of the solution, to be a part of something which is good. And we know that Prophet Muhammad Wasallam has given us information when it comes to, uh, to you being a believer. And, 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 you know, when you self-check, you know, being someone who believes in, in, in the Prophet Wasallam saying, لَا يُؤْمِنُوا أَحَدَكُمْ حَتَّى يُحِبُّ لِأَخِيهِ مَا يُحِبُّ لِنَفْسِهِ That you will not believe, you will not believe. You will not believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself, until you want for your brother what you want for yourself. And if you was in a difficult situation, if you made a, a decision in, a, in, 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 in an instant uh, without thinking and, and, and it led to you being uh, incarcerated, you would want the community to be there with you and not to abandon you. If your child got caught in a circumstance or situation and made a decision that led to them being incarcerated, you would not want the community to abandon them and to not be there for them and to not to supply them with the things that would make them reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which would be the Quran which would be materials that would lead them to be back in line with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the message of Islam and with the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and and, and in that vein uh, one of the things that we also do is, is not just go to the jails and the prisons of those who have been incarcerated for committing uh, acts against the society, but also we go to detention facilities. And many of these detention facilities are holding and housing persons who were only trying to uh, reach this land seeking uh, refuge. And because of uh, them leaving uh, sometimes in a desperate way and not having uh, documentation, then they get placed in these detention centers and say have not committed any wrong and oftentimes if they're fighting for uh, asylum then they can be held in these uh, facilities uh, for up to a year, two or three years and oftentimes there's no one uh, providing them with Qur'ans or providing them with any uh, Islamic materials and, and often their families are in distant lands and don't know where they are because they don't have funds, they've been robbed. I mean these persons often have traveled here from ways uh, across the jungles of South and Central America uh, to land on the borders and then to be uh, placed in these detention facilities. So they are not persons who were here and then got caught and so they have family who know where they are and can send the materials. There are thousands uh, who even were caught on the Canadian border but they're sent way out here to California or they were here in, uh, in the Texas or the Arizona border and got sent all the way to the to Texas or the Midwest or somewhere far distant from where if they do even have relatives in the United States they have not had contact with them and so these are also persons that we uh, go and visit and we go and see and we try to make sure that at these facilities that they also have hijabs because for the, for the sisters uh, that are in these incarcerated facilities they want to be able to uh, wear their hijabs and they also want to be able to have uh, dhikr beads and, and other materials uh, that identifies them as being Muslim and so uh, when we request from you that we're trying to uh, get kufis or uh, dhikr beads or uh, prayer or and, and you might say, well, these are not essentials. But for persons incarcerated, these are essentials. Uh, anything that identifies them uh, with Islam and with being a Muslim uh, becomes an essential item for them. And uh, those of other faith traditions do get to have uh, rosaries and, 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 and uh, tefillin and, and other uh, religious artifacts for their tradition. So these are things that we uh, on the outside want to be able to also uh, make sure that you know our brothers and sisters are given these uh, items or can have access to these items uh, inshallah 
is this uh, again in this environment to where everything has been taken away from them their identity their names they're just numbers uh, they can have these material things that no they are not essential uh, according to our to the Sharia but they are essential for their mental health and just for their uh, identification purposes that inshallah uh, we support their right to be able to have these uh, material. Again, I want to touch base a little bit on, on the stakeholders. Uh, who are the stakeholders for making sure that the Muslims uh, inside the jails and the prisons needs are taken care of? Well, the stakeholders are the, the government officials because their responsibility and their role is to make sure that persons aren't denied access to their religious uh, acumens or their religious uh, leaders and their religious materials. And so they are a stakeholder, but they only can have a stake if they have a partner. And we as a community, we, we have a stake because we want to make sure that our brothers and sisters are not mistreated uh, and are not denied what is uh, available, what is legal for them to be able to have, as well as the overall community is a stakeholder because most of the persons that are incarcerated will get out and uh, it, it's not good for their mental health or for their well-being if they're being punished unnecessarily uh, outside of what the laws call for by being denied and then they get out angry and then uh, you know there there's a uh, you know there's an outcome that, that none of us wants to see when someone has been incarcerated and they was angry for that four years, five years, ten years, fifteen years, uh, then this is a person that's coming out in, in, in a rage. And so there's not to any of our interests that persons come out in a rage. Uh, what is to our best interest is they come out knowing that there was a community that never gave up on them. There was a community that strove to put in place a mechanism for them to better themselves and to reacclimate themselves and to reconnect themselves with that community. So we have a vested interest and we are stakeholders in making sure that we're at the table when decisions are being made about those that are incarcerated uh, and, and what are some of the services that they can pro be provided inside as well as uh, as they be ready to come out, whether that's transitional housing uh, and, and, and other ways that we reorientate them back into the community. So I want us to, to see ourselves as being stakeholders in uh, having involvement with those that are incarcerated, uh, inshallah. Why should you give your sadaqah and your zakat uh, and funds for this cause? Because this is the way that a difference can be made. Uh, we cannot be able to provide services. We cannot be able to uh, assist a volunteer program uh, being built and expanding without there being a means for persons to be able to travel to visit. Uh, most of the prisons in California and jails are in isolated areas outside of the, the urban areas and are not easy to get to. So uh, a person may have to drive 50 miles or 75 miles one way to go and to visit uh, at one of the jails or the prisons. And we want to be able to have the funding that can be able to support uh, their ability to be able to, to get there. Uh, again, when it comes to Ramadan and, and it comes to the uh, assisting with, the, with buying the dates and materials of that nature or even uh, with these libraries expanding and increasing uh, the books and materials there, uh, this, this is an, uh, an ongoing need for capital uh, to get these materials. And so this is where your zakat funds, which are uh, zakat uh, uh, allowed, uh, illegal, according to the, 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 the ulema that have been uh, spoken to and, and, and the fit councils uh, have looked at those who are incarcerated, those who are prisoners, uh, they have a right uh, to the access of the funds from zakat that can go towards uh, taking care of them and, and their needs can be spent in that way. And so we are zakat eligible to receive the funds and have those funds. Your sadaqa, you know, alhamdulillah, uh, is, is going towards a good cause. Again, it's going towards those who are captive, those who have been held against their will, those who are, uh, you know, in this circumstance and situation uh, that, that is, is, is of a need. And so, you know, alhamdulillah, uh, again, may you continue to support us uh, so we can be able to expand what we do uh, and, and how we do it, inshallah, in the best way that we represent uh, our community. Uh, inshallah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to accept, uh, you know, this, this, what I've said, if I've said anything that uh, it was not clear, then inshallah, you can, you can email uh, us at the, the Shura. 
uh, council, inshallah. Uh, you can follow us on our different uh, uh, platforms uh, to, to learn more about prison outreach program, uh, inshallah, and find ways in which you can be able to uh, literally uh, become a volunteer uh, in one of the jails or the prisons uh, throughout uh, Southern California in particular. There is a great need in, in Riverside County, in San Bernardino County, in uh, Orange County, in Los Angeles County, uh, in Kern County, in Ventura County. We cover all of these areas and the need is, is, is great. Uh, and so, inshallah, uh, please uh, reach out to us uh, and, and, and inshallah be uh, available to, to follow the program that we've done on Shura TV where we've had the Muslim uh, female chaplains to uh, articulate what's going on there and, and, and what they do and some of the men chaplains we've had some of those who've been incarcerated to speak on uh, what Islam did for them and what Islam continues to do for them now that they're out uh, but there are millions and, and hundreds of thousands that will not get out that we want to be able to inshallah be there uh, for them as well uh, so uh, again please uh, support us uh, follow us and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and your families. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.